Let's pray and ask God to bless our time together. Would you join me? Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and uh, we are just anticipating your presence with us. And we want to invite you to come and to open up our ears, open up our hearts so that we can receive your word into our life today. We pray, we pray that you would um, be with us all in our, our different homes as we uh, seek you together. Just bless our time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I, uh, I, I don't know about you, but I think this year has been terrible so far. Like this whole entire year 2020 has been just an absolute disaster. Like, can, can we say it? Can we say like 2020 sucks? Right. Can I get an amen? Like it's it's just been a, a, a terrible, terrible year. I mean, there's all this crazy stuff going on um, in, in politics, all these division people arguing. Um, do you remember how this year started? I think we even forgot. Uh, it, it started with that, that gigantic fire in um, in Australia. I mean, there, there was all these horrific pictures in, in Australia with um, with uh, the uh, koala bears and and kangaroos fleeing from their lives and, and you know, uh, burned up koala bears. It's just like really sad. Right. And then a little bit later, uh, we heard the tragic news of the death of uh, Kobe Bryant and his daughter and those other people in that helicopter. I mean, as a big Lakers fan, big Kobe fan, I mean, just, that was just devastating. That was just like uh, like terrible. And then and then we got the uh, um, the news about uh, this new virus, COVID nineteen. We thought it was all the way over there in, in in China or in Europe, and then all of a sudden it starts hitting America, and there's quarantined. Um, Businesses has to close down. The economy is crashing. You got uh, kids can't go to school anymore. You go to the store, there's no food. Everyone has to wear a mask, and it's kind of it's kind of crazy, you know. Um, and then just uh, um, this last week, we we heard about the news of the killing of Ahmad Arbery in in Georgia. I mean, oh my goodness, that's just so tragic. It's just terrible to see see something like that happen. Like like it, like, man, it's just crazy. Personally, I, I hit a, I, I had another gut punch just recently. Um, one of my pastor friends, a, a guy that I've known for for I don't know fourteen years or so, um, he actually uh, died a couple of days ago, and the news is that it was um, uh, a self inflicted um, gunshot wound. So, um, so most likely it was a, um, a suicide. And the crazy thing was he, he, he left behind a wife and four children. And it just really hit me and a lot of um, pastors in our, in our network really hard just to think about what kind of darkness are you in um, where you have to take your life and, you know, you're leaving behind these kids. And it's just, it's just kind of crazy. So... This year, it's just, it's just a terrible year. Um, and in light of that, I think we need some encouragement. We need an encouraging message. You know, when, when I need encouragement, when things are, are getting crazy in my life, one of the things I like to do is I like to recite Psalm 23 from memory. And it, usually when I do that, it, it, it um, brings me perspective and it comforts me. And that's one of the reasons why we have been studying um, Psalm 23 here. We started this series. It, it's called My Cup Overflows. And um, we're going to continue the series in Psalm 23 today. Um, and what we're going to do is um, we're going to focus in on the section where it talks about uh, the valley of the shadow of death. So let me go ahead and read this passage uh, to you. Okay. It says the, the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me in paths of righteousness. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I think it's appropriate with all the craziness that's happening around the world today, that our topic is the valley of the shadow of death. And I feel like that's a little bit of what we're going through. Um, the literal 
original language, the literal Hebrew for this, um, for the word, the valley of the shadow of death, uh, it could be translated the valley of deepest darkness, deepest darkness. And, and that's kind of how I feel like this, this whole year it feels like we, we've had this dark cloud over us this whole time. It's like, we're, we're going through this one long dark Valley. And I don't know if you've ever been in a period of like, like total darkness, a place of total darkness, like darkness, Total darkness is just, is really scary. I, I, I remember taking um, the family. Well, we went camping and then we visited these caverns and, you know, we, we went all the way down there and, you know, on, like down this, this, the inside the, these caves, you know, with a tour, a tour guide and all that. And we got to the bottom and then we shut off all the lights. And even though there was a group of us and the guide was there, um, it was so dark. You literally could not see um, your hand one inch in front of your face. And, I don't know. It, it, even though I knew people were there and we we're safe, I, I started getting fearful and, 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 you know, total darkness is, 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 is scary. And that's, that's a picture of what this, this passage is talking about. It's, it, it's talking about going through a period of, of darkness, of fear. And we all have gone through periods of time like that. Um, some of us are going through it right now. Some of us are, or maybe, you know, there's another one around the corner. Um, on Thursday night out at, at our online Bible study, we we're talking about this, this passage and we we're sharing about like, like periods of time when we experience, you know, these dark valleys and different people share different experiences. One person talked about, um, not being able to sleep because they had like night terrors. Um, one person talked about their experiencing, uh, their experience escaping Vietnam, you know, when the communists took over, uh, they got into a boat and they were actually adrift for 19 whole days, um, out at sea, 19 days, uh, without food, like, you know, their food was rotten and they didn't know what was going to happen in that whole time. Was was just this dark valley. Another person talked about the experience of of their divorce, you know, with an unfaithful spouse and divorce, and and um, now they're they're a single parent. They have to take care of these kids by themselves. You know, it's just this dark dark valley. Other people talked about you know when they hear criticism or rejection or or abandonment, things like that. When people start like like that's a that's a dark valley, and we all go through. Our dark valleys, we all go through. It's just part of life. But what I want you to know is like that you don't have to go through these dark valleys alone. Dark valleys, they're 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 a universal experience, a universal human experience. It, it's all throughout the scriptures. There, there's tons of examples of people going through dark valleys. Like almost all the saints that that we uh, we read about in the scriptures went through a time of difficulty where they were wandering and they're questioning, uh, you know, asking God why. You know, it's a quote a wilderness experience, or, or people call it a desert wandering. Um, some Christian writers call it um, a dry time or a season of drought. St. John of the Cross calls it um, the dark night of the soul. Uh, Eugene Peterson, in his uh, memoir, he talks about going through a period, uh, a dark period in his life. He calls it the Badlands. And for him, it lasted six years. So, you know, dark valleys are a universal human experience. And, and maybe some of you are going through a dark valley right now. You know, you're dealing with a loss a death, a divorce, maybe a financial loss. Maybe you're struggling with feeling rejected or abandoned or betrayed by someone you care about. Maybe um, you feel like you're a failure, you're discouraged, you're depressed, you're in despair. Or maybe you're dealing with an illness or, you know, a physical pain that's chronic, that that's just that won't go away. Or something tragic has happened and, and perhaps you're going through a, a dark valley um, during this period of time. Uh, so what I want to do is, is, is this. I, I actually want to um, um, draw a diagram about what I think um, what I think Psalm 23 is talking about. So I'm going to put on this uh, little overhead camera here and so I could draw this diagram and uh, so here we go. There's my face right there in the corner. So this is this is a um, a, a diagram, a, a picture that I think what describes what Psalm 23 is talking about. Okay, 
So um, this is um, this is us right here. That's you and me. Uh, what what we do is we we like to um, go through life um, here safe in this little um, this little comfort bubble. You know, this is our comfort zone, right? This is our comfort zone, and um, what happens is that Jesus comes into our lives, and he said he comes to us, and he says, "Would you come follow me? You know, I am the good shepherd. Uh, come, come and follow me. Come follow me. Um, I will lead you down um, these paths." of righteousness right I'll lead you down these paths of righteousness and uh, we'll take you I'll take you to uh, green pastures and uh, you'll be fulfilled and ultimately I'll bless you and what you'll sense what, what you'll feel um, is your experiences overflow where your cup overflows right and he's inviting us. He says, come follow me. I'll be your shepherd. Just trust me. But along the way, um, there will be these things that we have to face that are called that are called dark valleys. But will you come and and follow me? We'll face through these periods, these dark periods, these dark valleys. But it's it's part of the path of righteousness. And, and the question that we have as we're sitting here, um, are we going to leave our comfort zone to follow the shepherd down these paths of righteousness, knowing that it's going to lead us through these dark valleys? Right. And, and the question that we that I want to try to, to get us to think about and to answer is. How can I walk? How can we walk? How can we walk through the quote? valley of the shadow of death, walk through these dark valleys with confidence. Um, so that, that's the, that's the question that we're trying to answer. You know, if there, if, if there's a main question I want us to talk about is, is this, okay, is how can I walk through the dark valleys of life with confidence? And if you, if you look at, um, at the passage, it says, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right? Um, so we're going to try to answer this question. How do we walk through? You know, it's not, it's not saying, how can I avoid the dark valleys? It's not saying, um, you know, how can I, I, how can I figure a way to, to get out of this? It says, no, no. How can I walk through the dark valleys with confidence and assurance? Um, when it says I walk through, you know, he's, he's not trying to avoid it. He's not running from it. He's not running away. He's not panicking. He's not paralyzed with fear, but he walks with confidence through that period of darkness. So that's the question that we're, we're trying to answer. How can we walk through life's dark valleys with, with confidence? OK, so there's there's a few lessons that we can learn from this passage that we can apply to our lives. So there's there's four of them. OK, I call them dark valley lessons. And so lesson um, number one is this. That we need to realize that dark valleys are a part of God's will, and it's actually one of the paths of righteousness. Right. It's it's a part of God's will. He says he leads me in paths of righteousness. Right. And, and this is how the verse goes. He says he leads me in paths of righteousness. And the, ver the very next line is even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And, and we see that dark valleys are not an accident. They're actually a part of the path of righteousness. And the, the picture is is, again, um, that we were sheep. Right. And we're supposed to go, um, we're supposed to follow the shepherd. And, and it is not an accident that we hit dark valleys. Like a lot of people think that if, if we um, follow God and we do what God says, everything's supposed to, you know, we're supposed to have a pain-free life and every, a life of comfort. And, but if you notice, it the, the, says um, the sheep, actually, the reason why the sheep experience a dark valley is because they follow the shepherd. Like if the sheep ignored the shepherd, they, they would be safe. 
right? The shepherd is intentionally taking the sheep to the dark valleys. It's purposeful. It has, um, it's part of the plan. It says, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, um, like it's, it's part, it's, it's not, it's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. Dark valleys are an intentional part of God's plan for our lives. Some people think that pain or trials or hardship uh, is a sign of God's displeasure or God's abandonment or God's punishment, but it's not. Dark valleys are a necessary part of our, our growth. Like God has a purpose. He's doing something. It's, it's part of the, quote, the paths of righteousness. And what God is doing is this, that God is trying to make us more righteous people. God is trying to build our character. But you and I, we don't care about our character, we care about being comfortable, but God cares more about our character than our comfort, right? God wants to make us holy people, righteous people, but we don't care about holiness. We care about happiness, but we need to realize that if we're going to follow God down these paths of righteousness, it will lead to dark valleys and, and it's intentional. It's, it's part of God's plan. So if you want to walk through the valleys with confidence, you got to realize that, that you're not outside of God's will. Sometimes when you're right in the middle of a storm in life, you're also right in the middle of God's will. Okay. Um, so that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is, is this. Dark valleys contain only the quote, the shadow of death and not death itself. You know, it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, um, it's not real. It's a shadow. And a, a shadow of a thing can't be the thing. A shadow is different than the thing that, that makes a shadow. But, but oftentimes a shadow seems larger than the object casting the shadow. You know, you, 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 you cast a light on the object and it makes a huge shadow on the wall. It's bigger than the object itself. And that's what uh, dark valleys seem like. Oftentimes, it seems it seems bigger than and than it really is, and it makes us uh, frightened. It obscures reality. But you have to realize that that shadows can't hurt you. Shadows shadows aren't real, and also that that shadows are temporary. Um, shadows don't last, and dark valleys don't last. It, it, notice it's just, even though I walk through the valley, like there's an end to this valley. There's an end. There's the other side of this tunnel. Like, I know for you who are experiencing pain and, and grief, and I know the pain is real, but the pain isn't forever, right? So, so we need to realize that it's only a shadow. It's only a shadow. It's temporary. Um, there, I, I, I read a quote by um, Mother Teresa, and this is what she says. She says, in light of heaven, the worst suffering on earth... A, 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 a life full of the most atrocious tortures on earth will be seen to be no more serious than one night in an inconvenient hotel. Right? It's saying like even the, the, the tough stuff that we have to deal with, it's only going to seem like a minor inconvenience be, uh, after we experience um, heaven and what God, you know, this is what C.S. Lewis uh, uh, says. Um, he, he said this, that when we're struggling here on earth, we, things don't make sense. We're wondering, God, why did you take me through that difficulty? And when we get to heaven, he says, everything's going to make sense in heaven when God reveals to us why he did it. And C.S. Lewis says, you know what? The first words we will say when we get to heaven and God explains all this stuff. He says, our first words when we get to heaven is, of course. Like, ah, I get it. That makes sense, right? So, so we have to realize that even though dark valleys are scary, there's just a shadow, right? It's a shadow of death, not death itself. In fact, even death has lost its power against us. That Jesus overcame the power of death by, by, by his resurrection. Remember, the Bible says, um, death has been swallowed up in, in victory. Old death, where is your sting? Old death, where is your victory? That even death has lost its power on us. So, so when you're going through difficulty and dark valleys, just remember, it's just a shadow. 
Shadows may be big and scary, but, but they can't hurt you. Shadows are temporary, and even death has lost its power. So that's lesson number two. Dark valleys only contain the shadow of death, not death itself. Let's move on to lesson number three. Lesson number three is this, that in the dark valleys, our confidence comes from the awareness of God's presence with us. It's, it's not just God's presence with us. It is the awareness of God's presence with us because God is always there, right? If you're a Christian, if you're a believer, if you ask God to come into your heart, he says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, right? He's always there, but you and I often forget that he is with us. And we think that we're all alone, right? But the psalmist says, um, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For, for you are with me. I know you're with me, right? We're, we're never alone. God has not abandoned us. That, that when we go through the dark valleys, like he didn't just give us directions and say, hey, you got to go through this valley and I'll meet you on the other side. He says, I'm going to go with you into this dark valley, right? He is with us. But our confidence comes only when we are aware of his presence with us. Like many of us live our day-to-day -day lives without being aware that God is right there in the trenches of life with us. Like he's there. You know, a lot of us are, are calling, God, where are you? Come help me. And no, it's just, you got to recognize that God is right there. He's right there. And when you become more aware of his presence with you, he'll give you confidence that I'm not alone, that God is with me. It's, it's interesting that in this passage of scripture, in Psalm 23, um, there's a big shift that happens um, at the point of the dark valleys. Um, Psalm 23 has six verses, only six verses. And, and the first three verses, what happens is that David is talking about God, right? He's talking and he uses the third person pronoun. And, and, and then, but it changes when it hits verse four, when it hits the, the, the valley of the shadow of death and his perspective totally changes. So let, let me, let me uh, um, explain. Let me put up the verses here in Psalm 23. Um, so, so he starts talking about God. And he uses the third person pronoun, he, okay? The Lord is my shepherd. Um, I have all that I need. And he says, he, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. And, and then there's a big shift that happens right when he enters the valley of the shadow of death. And this is where he realizes that God is not just an idea. God is a person who is with him. Okay. When, when David enters the valley of uh, the dark valleys, everything changes. He stops talking about God and he starts talking to God and the pronouns change. He goes from saying he, um, third person pronoun to, to doing, using first person pronoun, you, right? He says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It goes on to say later on, it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. And his, his, his complete perspective uh, changes. And this, this is what I want to tell you. Our faith becomes real in the dark valley. Like our, our faith isn't built up on the mountaintops. It's like that's not where faith is built. Like if you were to ask me, how did God become real to you? Like, was it through Bible study? And I say, no, that wasn't that. Was it going through going to church, singing worship songs, raising your hands? Is that how God became real to you? And it's, no, it wasn't that. Right. For me, God became real to me when my worst fear and insecurity became true. It was when I was young and my, uh, my mom uh, left our family. Uh, well, I know now that, what, you know, she was really leaving my father, her, you know, her husband, an unhealthy marriage. But as a kid, all I know is I just felt abandoned. I was like, I don't know why mom doesn't live with us anymore. And it was during that season 
that God became real to me. That my faith was, was born in tears. That I felt abandoned. I felt unloved. My, my heart was broken. And that's when God became my shepherd. And he, and he walked with me through the dark valley. And that's how my faith was built. It was in the dark valley. That in the dark valley, we could take comfort in, in, in knowing that, that God is with us, right? So for many of you there who are struggling with, with growing your faith and you're wondering why, maybe God is trying to use that period of time to reveal himself to you in a deep way that, w- that you wouldn't have, he wouldn't have gotten your attention without forcing you to go through that. In the dark valley, one of the things we realize is that not only about God's presence, it says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. But then, and then it says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So it's not just about God's presence. You know, it, um, it, it also talks about being comforted by knowing that his, his rod and his staff are there. Okay, what is he talking about? Right? It says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What is that talking about? The rod is um, a stick used for protection. Um, you know, when, when, when David was a shepherd, he, 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 he protected his sheep. He talked about how he had to kill a lion and kill a bear who, who were trying to, to um, eat his sheep, right? Um, so a rod is, is a symbol of protection, right? Used to protection, so to protect his animals. And then he says, um, um, your rod and your staff, are, are with me. They comfort me. The staff is that little, you know, the, the, the shepherd's crook, the little, you know, the little hook, uh, uh, stick with the hook. It's used for guidance. Like if a sheep is, is going astray and, and, and you know, a, a, a far away from the path, uh, that's to read, you know, you take that staff and you redirect the sheep and you pull them back in. Right. So, so what it's saying here, it says your rod and your staff are, 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 they comfort me. Because when we're in the dark valley, we can't see anything. We feel vulnerable, right? The animals, wild animals, the wolves are out there somewhere. And we don't know where they are because we can't see. It's dark. And, but we know that the shepherd has a, has a rod that he's going to protect us, right? That brings us comfort, that God's going to protect me. Also, when we're in a dark valley, we can't see the path. Like maybe if I go too far, I'm going to fall off the cliff. We don't know if we're going in the right direction. But because the shepherd has a staff, the staff to guide us, I feel, I feel relaxed. I feel like even though I don't know where I'm going, I can't see um, the enemies. I don't see the dangerous terrain. I know that because my shepherd is with me, he has a rod to protect me. He has a staff to guide me. Like, I don't need to know where I'm going. I just need to be close to the shepherd because I know he knows where he's going. Right? So in, in, the, in the dark valley, that's lesson number three. We are confident when we are aware of God's presence with us that he's also there to protect us and to guide us. That's lesson number three. Um, Lesson number four is that it's better to enter the dark valleys with our shepherd than to stay in our comfort zone without him. It's better to to enter the dark valleys with the shepherd than to stay in our comfort zone without him. So this this picture again, right? Like where, what's the best place to be? Here in our comfort zone, away from by ourselves or in the dark valley with our shepherd. And what I want to say is it, it is so much better to be in a storm of life with Jesus in our boat than to try to do life by ourselves. Like we like to try to avoid pain. We like to seek comfort. Guess what? We cannot avoid pain. It's just part of life, right? The thing is, if you, if we don't follow our shepherd, we're never going to experience the amazing plan that, that he has for us. Like Jesus has an amazing plan for us. He, he doesn't want to take from us. He wants to give us things, right? Jesus says the thief, right? The devil, he comes to steal from you, 
to lie to you, to cheat. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life abundantly, life overflowing. And, and we need to learn to trust God that even though he may be taking us through difficult situations, it is for our own good. It is a path of righteousness. It is part of his plan. And the question for, for some of you out there, you, you, you're probably asking, you know, like, you know, I don't know if I can really trust God. Like, I know God's real, but I don't know if I can really trust him. Like, what if I follow him through the dark valleys and he, he just abandons me? Right? Maybe, maybe you have trust issues. Like, I, I, I had a lot of trust issues growing up. You know, every, everyone I loved let me down. You know, and you were thinking, like, how can I be confident that God won't let me down? In this dark valley. If, if that's where you are and you're wondering if you could trust God, let me read you some verses to, to show you that God is worthy of your trust. So, John 10, Jesus says this. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep, he sees the wolf coming and he leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and he cares nothing for the sheep. He's like, like, Hey, I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. I'm in it. Like, this is not a short term commitment. I am the good shepherd. I'm not just a hired hand. I'm not going to run away from you when the wolf comes. Actually, I will lay down my life for you. And that's what Jesus does. He's a good shepherd and he laid down his life for us on the cross. It continues, verse 14, says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. And no one can snatch them out of my hand. I'm going to keep them safe. And I just want to tell you that if, if you need evidence that Jesus is worthy of your trust. If he, he's really, if he really loves you and he really cares about you, like think about what he has already done for you. Like think about the cross. Like the cross reminds us that Jesus has already carried us through the worst, darkest valley there was. And now that, that's the valley of our sin where God's um, wrath was being poured out to punish our sins, Jesus carried us through that dark valley. In fact, he laid down his life for the sheep and he became our substitute and he died on the cross. And that just shows us that, that he's committed to us, that he didn't abandon us in that dark valley and he won't abandon you now. But he's earned our trust. He's already proven his love and his faithfulness to to us on the cross. And if you think about that, God is that loving and that powerful, why would you not want to just go wherever he goes? Like, why would you want to stay in your comfort zone bubble? Right? Because it, it's safer where the shepherd is anyways. So that's, that's lesson number, number four. You know, I just want to say that you're going to face dark valleys. It's just part of life. We don't get to choose to have a life without pain. Like, like you can't choose like a life of comfort or a life of pain. It's like, no, no, a life of complete comfort, that's not even a, an option, right? Uh, because hardship is just part of life. But we do have a choice, one choice. The choice is this. Will you go through the dark valleys alone or will you go through the dark valleys with the good shepherd, the shepherd who loves you, who who's willing to lay down his life for you? You know, Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. It's personal. The question I have for you, I want you to think about is this simple one. Is Jesus really your shepherd? Is Jesus really your shepherd? Now, I, I didn't ask 
do you consider yourself a Christian? Because you probably do. I didn't ask, do you believe in the Bible? I asked, is Jesus really your shepherd? When you say the Lord is my shepherd, that, that's a statement of intimacy. It's a statement of trust. It's a statement of active obedience. It's a statement of dependence. Is Jesus really your shepherd? Do you know his voice? Do you trust him? Are you following him? Do you recognize his presence with you? When you're afraid, who do you run to for comfort? Do you run to him? Is Jesus really your shepherd? Right? Some of you out there, maybe, maybe he, he's not. And this is all new to you. If, he, if Jesus is not your shepherd, like, why not? Like, Jesus is knocking on the door of our hearts. He's like, yeah, I, w- I want to take care of you. I want to be your shepherd. Like, all you have to do is just invite him into your heart. And ask him to be your shepherd. Confess your sin. And invite him to be your Lord and Savior. Or for uh, others of us, you know, we're like one of those sheep that has wandered away. You know, we're lost. Um, maybe you're one of those distracted or disobedient sheep and you wandered. And, and I want you to know that Jesus has been looking for you. He's looking for you. He's been, he, he, you know, searching for you. He's been calling your name. And the question is like, why don't you stop running? Why don't you stop hiding? Why don't you come home and make Jesus your shepherd? Right? Is Jesus really your shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me in paths of righteousness. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you, Jesus, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Jesus, thank you for being our good shepherd. Let's pray. Lord, We thank you for your presence. We want to say that we trust you. Even though we face these dark valleys, we know that you have a purpose for for them. We know you haven't abandoned us. Lord, I just pray that you would increase our faith and give us confidence and assurance in you so that we can enter these valleys and that we can learn and that we can grow, Lord, and that you can lead us through these paths of righteousness so that we could become people that will bring you glory and honor, Lord. And for those of us who are going through difficulties and hardships right now, I pray for your your presence to comfort them. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.